the infraspinatus muscle. The infraspinatus is a thick triangular muscle located on the posterior aspect of the scapula. Here is the scapula from the back. Here is the spine of the scapula. The supraspinatus fossa is above the spine and the infraspinatus fossa is below the spine. The infraspinatus arises from the infraspinatus fossa of the scapula. It inserts into the middle facet on the greater tuberosity of the humerus. It's also one of the four rotator cuff muscles. What is the action of the muscle? Action of the muscle is external rotation of the shoulder with the arm to the side. The muscle is trying to pull the arm towards the back. It means external rotation. The infraspinatus is really a major external rotator of the shoulder. It also contributes to the humeral head depression action of the cuff. You can test this muscle by having the arm adducted and the elbow is flexed at 90 degree and the patient will attempt external rotation. Infraspinatus innervation. It is innervated from the upper trunk, C5, C6. There is only one nerve, one branch come out of the upper trunk. That is the supraescapular nerve. Here is a detailed explanation of the course and the innervation of this nerve. Compression of the nerve at the suprascapular notch will result in atrophy of both the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscles. Compression of the nerve distal to spinoglenoid notch will lead to isolated weakness of the infraspinatus. This phenomena is seen in overhead athletes, usually associated with slab or posterior labral tears. Entrapment of the nerve at the spinoglenoid notch usually occurs from a ganglia cyst. Here is some important facts involving the infraspinatus muscle. Shoulder dislocation and cuff tears. Cuff tears occur in 80% of patients above the age of 60 with a shoulder dislocation. Posterior approach of the scapula or posterior portal for shoulder arthroscopy. It utilizes the plane between the infraspinatus supplied by the suprascapular nerve and the teres minor supplied by the axillary nerve. This plane is usually safe. Avoid going distal to the teres minor because the axillary nerve will be there. Because of that risk, some people like to do muscle splitting approach for the infraspinatus to avoid injury to the axillary nerve. That posterior approach of the scapula is usually used for glenoid fracture and osteotomy. Another area where the infraspinatus may be involved is the l sex lesion. When the shoulder dislocates anteriorly, the l sex lesion is usually posteriorly on the head of the humerus. And when you have a defect in that head, more than 25% this is a large defect. It's called engaging Helsax lesion. An operation called remplissage is utilized to fill that defect. 
It is an infraspinatus and capsular transfer. The health sac lesion is filled with the posterior capsule and by the tenodesis of the infraspinatus tendon to reduce the risk of osseous engagement. Also check for banker lesion for possible concomitant repair of that lesion. Now, this is an important topic, which is atrophy of the infraspinatus muscle. If you find there is an atrophy of the infraspinatus fossa visible in a patient, then that patient may have entrapment of the nerve or it may have a chronic massive tear. Massive tear is defined as more than 5 cm complete or complete tears with two tendon involvement or tears with retraction to the glenoid. Check the degree of muscle fatty atrophy which is best seen on sagittal MRI. The muscle atrophy is irreversible and usually indicates a future poor outcome after rotator cuff tear repair. Here is a massive rotator cuff tear with some fatty atrophy. And we just said the result is very poor with rotator cuff repair. We got several options, but here are the best two options. If there is irreparable posterior rotator cuff tear, the latissimus dorsi is transferred to the greater tuberosity. You must have an intact subscapularis tendon, and this is usually done in young patient with massive irreparable cuff tear. Second option is reverse shoulder arthroplasty, usually done with older patient more than 70 years old with cuff arthropathy with anterosuperior escape, it means the humeral head migrate proximally. You must have a functional deltoid means the axillary nerve must be working. If, you, if the axillary nerve is not working and there is a massive cuff tear, then you're looking for shoulder fusion. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.